Hi everyone, Dr. Jerry Cuomo here in Boca Raton once again with a bone level case. I'm uh, reviewing the laboratory work now. This particular case was uh, revealed in the last video where we had an issue with um, where the implants were p actually placed. The uh, obvious uh, problem came where the implants were were placed in the interprox area and so now the lab was given a choice uh, whether to go screw retained or or cementable they happen to choose the cementable route we'll find out if it was the right right path to take um, these are the crowns and let me zoom in a little bit and as I take off the crowns you will see what the custom abutments look like there is one and this is the understructure so right away you can see that there's plenty of material dental material and porcelain that had to be built to the mesial since we were off almost a half a tooth with the implants the other uh, implant pretty much the same thing only this one happened to be a little less um, I want to say more over contoured than under contoured um, and and its design again if I look underneath the um, the crown itself looks as though it has uh, uh, an oblong look to it all right, so we will find out just about exactly how retentive this case is going to be come uh, come next week when we go to try it in. My biggest fear is that um, that this tooth is going to be somewhat non-retentive in the long term. We might have to re-cement it. The other crown definitely shows much more of a, a better design. Um, as far as retention. Let me get rid of the uh, articulator. Here we go. Now if you look at the inner prox, you'll notice that the embrasure spaces, this one might be a little too tight. This one looks more adequate. We might want the lab to open up that embrasure to allow better cleaning for the patient. Uh, so again, kind of like pseudo crown, pseudo ponics, where you're dealing with uh, uh, a spatial relationship issue that becomes more of a discipline of how can we make this, you know, better for chewing and yet uh, um, support, uh, be supported by the implants. Let's take a look now at the actual implant abutments themselves the custom abutments with the time we have remaining um, and discuss that a little further. All on, on every one of my previous cases that I've discussed on YouTube, the underside or the submergence and emergence profiles both uh, were very smooth and very highly polished. Now uh, this case when I got it back today happened to be a little different and so I want to show you um, show you what that uh, these abutments uh, look like. Number one, um, if your lab sandblasts, you want to make sure that they put the analog on first before they do any heavy sandblasting. The problem is the the sandblasting is going to go below the uh, the level of the implant. It's going to get into uh, the designated milled surfaces that you really don't want to have to go back in and polish again. And now that they're sandblasted, there's really nothing we can do at this point. From the level of the implant up to, I want to say, the margin, it really should be highly polished. There's another issue here is where the lab uh, waxed the case and casted a little lip right here. And this lip is going to be subgingival. You don't want that. You want it to be continuous. So that has to be modified. And then this collar needs to be polished all the way, I want to say, to the the 
the interface between the inside of the implant and this line. When Strauman gives you the casting abutment, you wax to a certain uh, metal rim, and that waxing um, should maintain the same consistency as far as polish. So this one has got to go back with a continuation slip that uh, this describes exactly what you want subgingerly. Again, this threw me for a loop. I uh, normally don't see this from my lab, and I don't know why that's there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him about it. So that's what you get on on this show. You'll you'll get um, you'll get all the the good cases, and you'll get some cases that need further modification. So we're not afraid of showing you some of these cases that that do need more work. Um, I covered a num another section on just fit checking, but if I were to just tell you that this is Fitting fairly close, I'll still fit check this case, but again, the retention, um, it kind of bothers me a little bit of just having maybe a three wall situation, but a very short prep. Maybe it might have been better to go with a screw retained here. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'll show you the other abutment, and um, it's good to have an extra analog so you can do these try ins. Uh, at chair site or in your buffer zone or in your own little small lab and utilizing a microscope really makes the job very easy very easy to see okay so here's the other button again this area subgingivally and, and near the uh, right in the embrasure space should be highly polished it is not and so they uh, they missed that one step. It also should be continuous. Again, this is the abutment, custom made from my laboratory, and then the seating. Now this one has a little play and some things that are going on that are going to need to be looked at because it's not going down all the way. So I'll have them recheck the uh the fit of this of this crown you know there there's there's perfection and then there's you know getting it close and uh you really want to try to get things as close as you can to perfection we're not perfect but uh but you should try to strive for that so if you see and compare one abutment with another one one fits a little better all they have to do is go in and refit check the case and it should seat a little better after you reseat this and it fits better on the on the abutment, then you have to go back in and recheck those contact areas. Looks like the lab condensed the porcelain fairly well. Um, I would like to see a little glaze on the underside. Looks like the sandblasting got up inside and inadvertently hit the uh, the pseudoponic area or the ridge lap area of the of the crown. Other than that, uh, I hope this enlightens most of you out there with your lab work and your laboratory technicians and getting you to communicate. I certainly have communicated uh, most of my work um, in writing and also small meetings that you may have with your lab. Again, uh, Dr. Jerry Cuomo um, here in Boca Raton just uh, reviewing the case before the patient comes in now we know the case needs to go back to the laboratory and so we'll take the next step and and checking this one again so hopefully in my next video series we'll uh, go over that with you and, uh, and show you the result final results all right take care everyone have a great uh, day and uh, do call in uh, if you have any questions have a good day bye bye